Hi, Amanda. It's uh, Dr. Ingalls here. Um, the questions you asked are a little bit difficult to answer over email, so I'm going to try and put a little YouTube video together for you to um, be able to take a look at this and try and make sense of it in your mind. So you had questions about the autonomic nervous system, and you seem to pretty much understand what's being shown in this diagram here as far as the efferent, sympathetic, and parasympathetic nervous systems are um, uh, involved. So this would be the sympathetic division over here being shown in blue where you have the short preganglionic fibers running into the sympathetic chain and then into the um, cervical ganglia. And then you have very long postganglionic fibers which reach their effector organs to initiate the fight or flight um, sort of scenario. <coughs> In red on the other side, we have the parasympathetic division, which has relatively long preganglionic axons that then synapse on relatively short postganglionic axons to reach the effector organ, and this would be the rest and digest sort of nervous system. So the question that you had was related to the afferent system coming back in, which is really not considered either sympathetic and parasympathetic. And uh, you did mention about the lateral horn, and that is certainly true as far as the efferents go. The um, cell bodies that we see in the actual central nervous system come off of the lateral horn. However, when we're looking at the afferents, it's a little bit different. It is true that they predominantly follow the sympathetic nervous system, but only to a certain degree. So here's where the confusion lies. This is showing the sympathetic nervous system, and this would be a typical efferent neuron coming off of the lateral horn, cell body in the lateral horn, preganglionic axon coming out, and then let's say it's going to the uh, effector organ and to the abdomen, which is where your question seems to lie. So from here, it would enter the spinal nerve, go through the white rami communicans, and then travel through one of the splanchnic nerves to some sort of prevertebral ganglion that's typically found on the celiac trunk or with the superior inferior mesenteric arteries. And then from there, it'll enter the effector organ. So again, that's what's being shown in this diagram here. Well, in addition to that, you also have these afferent fibers that are found within the wall, excuse me, of the um, digestive tract. And from here, they're gonna follow the same route back. So what you have to imagine, it's not drawn in here, but you have to picture fibers, and um, I'll include these images as attachments if you want to draw this in as you go. And basically, you're going to have this one long axon that's going to travel back through these um, smaller nerve branches into the ganglion, celiac ganglion, or superior mesenteric ganglion, etc., so forth. They don't synapse here. They just keep going. They're just following the track backwards. They then will enter the splanchnic nerves and travel back to the sympathetic chain. And from here, once again, no synapse, they'll go through the white rami communicans and travel back up the spinal nerve here. This is where the path diverges. So essentially these afferent fibers that are sending messages back, they follow the exact same route that the efferents did up to this point. From here, they're going to take the same route as any other sensory fiber. They're going to go through the dorsal rama, uh, sorry, the dorsal root. Remember, all sensory goes in the back, all motor goes out the front. This is the exact same thing. So they're going to go through the dorsal root. This is where you see their cell bodies. They're clustered in with the cell bodies of somatic sensory in the dorsal root ganglion. And just like somatic sensory, they are then going to enter into the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, and then they will synapse with second-order fibers and travel up to the central nervous system. So long answer to your question, yes, they do travel backwards, they do reach the central nervous system, and they typically synapse in certain um, ganglion that we find in the um, pretty much within the brainstem uh, sort of region. So uh, nodose, uh, petrosal ganglion, um, 
that are associated with some of the autonomic fibers. It was the nucleus tractus solitarius that we find in the uh, dorsal aspect of the medulla oblongata. I'm not sure if you talked about these in depth, but these would be some of the examples of things that they would actually uh, synapse in. So going back to this for a second, if we look at this picture, the way that these would travel, you'd have these pain fibers or whatever else sensory fibers coming backwards, entering into this case, let's say the superior mesenteric ganglion or the celiac ganglion, depending on whether it's foregut or midgut. And then from there through the splanchnic nerves, through the sympathetic chain, back to the spinal cord, through the dorsal root ganglion at this point, entering the dorsal horn, synapsing, and then sending something up which would in fact, synapse on ganglia within the central nervous system to be able to display their effect. The other question that you had was um, what it meant when we say that afferents follow sympathetics until below the pelvic pain line, or they follow parasympathetics. So we have this um, pain line that is very generally um, considered the um, lower aspect of the uh, parietal peritoneum. So everything below the parietal peritoneum would be considered below the pain line with the exception of the descending colon. So everything in the hind gut area would also be below that pain line. So this diagram is a little incorrect here. You wouldn't see these fibers over in this area. This would actually be controlled by the vagus nerve. So essentially what you're noticing is that all of these structures are innervated by the pelvic splanchnic nerves as far as the parasympathetic goes. So you probably remember the term craniosacral outflow. The overwhelming majority of sympathetic outflow is from the cranial nerves, including the vagus, which goes to the entire digestive tract up until we get to the splenic flexure. And then all of this is done by the pelvic splanchnic nerves. Again, ignore this. This is a mistake. So what that means is the area that's actually innervated by the pelvic splanchnic nerves, for whatever reason, the afferents, rather than traveling with the blue, they're going to travel with the pelvic splanchnics and instead of entering the um, thoracic region, they're now going to enter the um, sacral region, S2, 3, and 4. But once again, they're going to take the exact same route as what we saw with the sympathetic nervous system. They're going to go through the dorsal root ganglion. They're going to go into the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, synapse with second order fibers, and once again, those are going to shoot up to the central nervous system to synapse with ganglia in the central nervous system. Hopefully this now makes a little bit more sense with you. Um, if you still have confusion about this, you're welcome to come by my office. I'm happy to outline it again to you. Um, I would just ask if that was the case that um, may need to hold off for uh, a week or two. Unfortunately, I'm uh, going to be heading out of town at the beginning of next week to give a talk at the university and uh, a little bit busy getting those sorts of things together in the final exams. But uh, once I'm back from that talk and the summer term begins, I am more than happy. Um, my schedule opens up and you're more than welcome to come by my office and uh, we can discuss this further if you need to. But um, hopefully it's not the case. Hopefully this makes a bit more sense to you and um, good luck with your studies.